Okay, Mr. Simmons, I've had a chance to look over the ultrasound images, and based on the size and the shape of that mass, I think it's best that we take it out. A mass? What, what could it be? Uh, it could be a cyst, although it could be a tumor as well. I can't really say for sure at this point, but I think it really needs to come out sooner than later. Like a tumor like cancer? No, well, not necessarily. Uh, not all tumors are cancerous, but again, as I said, we can't say for sure right now, so we're going to need to run some labs on it, uh, but it does need to come out. All right, when, when can we do that? Well, I can't do it personally. Uh, we're gonna need to refer you to a surgeon to take care of that. A surgeon? Do you mean I have to, do I have to stay in a hospital? No, it's a very simple outpatient procedure. You can probably be in and out within an hour or two. Okay. Um, we can probably get you set up within the next week or so. All right, let's, let's do it then. Okay, uh, <clears throat> there's a few surgeons in town. The one that I would recommend, uh, she's board certified. She's been practicing in Winchester for 16 years. She's absolutely, best of the best. Great. Let's do it. What's her name? Uh, it's Dr. Martin, actually. Dr. Martin. Hey, wait, isn't isn't that a wife? Dr. Martin, yeah. You've met her before. Yeah. Her I lady think you've met her one time. Yeah. Uh, she, she's, she really is tops. And I don't just say that because she's my wife. She really is the best. All right. I wouldn't I... trust my health with anyone else. Okay. Well, I trust you. Okay. So okay. when can she see me then? Probably in the next week or so. Uh, now, she typically doesn't work with Medicaid patients. Okay. But whatever Medicaid doesn't pay, you can set up a payment plan so you don't need to stress about the extra money that it will cost you. So it can be spread out over a long period of time so you don't need to worry. All right, let's, let's just do it as soon as we can and get this out. Okay, I'll have the girls up front take care of it for you. All right, thank you. The anti-kickback law and Stark law are two regulations in place to protect patients and federal health insurance programs from fraud and abuse. While similar in purpose, these legal statutes differ in many ways. The anti-kickback law is a legal clause that makes it illegal to refer federally insured patients to providers, services, or products in which that practitioner has financial stake. This regulation was initiated in the Social Security Act in 1972 to protect patients and federal health insurance programs from abuse and fraud by removing incentives for inappropriate health care decision making. Enforced by the Office of the Inspector General at the United States Department of Health and Human Services, the anti-kickback law is applied to anyone who does business with a federal health care program, including physicians, physician assistants, and nurse practitioners. Despite the seemingly stringent regulations imparted by the anti-kickback law, there exist safe harbors that allow well-intentioned, commonplace exceptions. These safe harbors include situations concerning space and equipment rental, personal service and management contracts, employment relationships, and investments in group practice. However, for safe harbors to be applied, the contract must meet specific requirements laid out by each exception. While the first case prosecuted under the 1972 Act was U.S. v. Porter of 1979, the seminal case surrounding the anti-kickback law is U.S. v. Grieber, decided April 30, 1985. This case determined that if the sole purpose of remuneration in an arrangement is to encourage patient referrals, the practitioner is violating the statute. This applies regardless of payments intended as compensation. The Stark Law, passed in three stages between 1989 and 2007, prohibits physicians from engaging in self-referral of Medicare and Medicaid patients to designated health services with certain exceptions. Stark 1, the initial phase of the regulation was introduced by the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1989 and took, and took effect January 1, 1992. The modification to this, Stark 2, was passed with the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1993. Stark III, the most current set of guidelines, was passed September 5, 2007 and took effect December 4, 2007. It remains in effect today. This most recent edit prevents inappropriate referrals of service to facilities at which the referring provider maintains financial interest. However, the statute applies only to physicians chiropractors and dentists participating in, in Medicare and Medicaid. Mid-level practitioners such as physician assistants and nurse practitioners do not fall under these regulations. As with the anti-kickback law, exceptions exist within the Stark Law. 
These exceptions allow for what would be stark violations when there are compensation agreements in office services or ownership or investment interest. Also similar to the anti-kickback law, these exceptions require adherence to specific guidelines for the exception to apply. In addition to the federal statutes, many states regulate their practitioners with more stringent laws. In Virginia, the Virginia Practitioner Self-Referral Act prevents referrals from practitioners of all patients, not just those with federal insurance. This law covers any individual licensed by the Virginia Department of Health Professions. Under this act, any situation is exempt if it qualifies for Stark Law exceptions. These regulations allow the Virginia Department of Health Professions to advise practitioners of their options regarding any proposed arrangements. While the anti-kickback and Stark laws may seem similar upon first glance, there exist differences between the two. Until recently, the anti-kickback law was only applicable if intent could be proven. The Stark law, however, has no regard for intent. If you break the civil statute, you are accountable for the repercussions. This brings up the next major difference between the two. The Stark Law is purely a civil statute, one without legal ramifications. The anti-kickback, on the other hand, is subject to legal prosecution. It is important to point out that a situation acceptable under the anti-kickback law may not be acceptable under the Stark Law, and vice versa. The difference in civil versus legal status affects the penalties associated with violation as well. Violators of the anti-kickback law may face fines of up to $25,000 and imprisonment of up to five years. Violators of the Stark Law, however, may encounter a larger fine of up to $100,000, but can serve no jail time under the civil statute. However, the legalities are not always as clear as those depicted in our first scenario. There are many sticky situations in which doing the best for the patient means breaking at least one of these two statutes. The following is an example of such a circumstance. Here we have Dr. Quinn discussing with her, with her patient, Mr. Jones, the pain he is having in his knees due to severe arthritis, and the possibility of referring him to a physical therapist in conjunction with his prescriptions and rest to help alleviate the pain. Mr. Jones, I reviewed your records, and I think that you would benefit from seeing a physical therapist to help you get better use of your knees and relieve some of that pain and swelling that we've been seeing. These medications, they're just not enough anymore. And plus, a PT can show you exercises that'll help you regain mobility. Well, how far is a physical therapist? You know, I have to walk to your office since I have no car, and this town is just too small for buses. All that walking is just too much for these old knees as it is. I don't know how much more walking I can do. Well, don't you have any family members or friends in the area? Well, my wife died several years ago. So, no. Uh, really, all I have is you, Doc, and my cat, Thurgood. He's always by my side. Well, the PT I was going to send you to has this clinic over in Shelbyville. But that's too far for you since you don't have a car and there's no bus system. Well, I remember you saying one time that your husband is some sort of a doctor. Can't he help you with this? Actually, he is a physical therapist, but I can't send you to him because it looks like I'm playing favorites, and that would be considered fraud in the eyes of the government. Well, gee, Doc, I didn't know that that was legal or something. I don't want you to get into any sort of trouble. So what do I do? Do I just not go to a PT? I really don't know what to do. This Stark Law really screws things up. My first priority is to help my patient, but I can't break the law. And besides, that's a huge fine. In understanding the anti-kickback and Stark laws, the intent of both regulations is most important. Both statutes are in place to protect patients and federal health insurance programs from fraud and abuse. However, both operate under different pretenses and with different penalties. The difference between legal prosecution of the anti-kickback law and civil prosecution of the Stark law is reflected most drastically in their associated penalties. As it pertains to physician assistance, the anti-kickback law and Virginia practitioner self-referral law are applicable. 
while the Stark Law is applicable only to physicians, chiropractors, and dentists. Because all of these regulations are so complex, there are many resources for legal consultation. Mr. Jones, I reviewed your records and I think that you benefit from seeing a physical therapist to help you get better use of your knees and to relieve some of that pain and swelling we've been seeing. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to go. Really, all I have is you, Doc, and my cat, Thurgood. He's always by my side. Mr. Jones, I reviewed your records, and I think that you would benefit from seeing a physical therapist. You know, I have to walk to your office since I have no car, and this town is just too small for buses. All that walking is just too much for these old knees as it is. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Wait. Stop, stop, stop. Hold on. Okay. Physical therapist. You know, I have to walk to her office since I have no car. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get in the room. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can't stop. I can't stop. 